So today we're gonna look, we looked at pretty exclusively at measuring items of length, right? Using a ruler and using the metric side of the ruler. Now we're gonna talk about how we measure volume and we measure mass correctly. So this device right here is called a graduated cylinder. Have you heard that term before? Graduated cylinder, okay? They're tall, skinny, and they're marked with lots of different things. Sometimes they're marked by the whole number. Sometimes they're marked by the tenths place. They're marked differently depending on what size of graduated cylinder you're using. So if we look at the one on the left, and let me kind of zoom that in a little bit. If we're looking at the one on the left, can you see here that it is measured to the whole number, right? This one right here, is measured to the whole number because it goes from 90, then there's 10 tick marks to get up to 100. Do we agree? So that means it's measured to the whole number. The same rule here applies. If my graduated cylinder is measured to the whole number, I would estimate to the tenths place, right? So when I read this graduated cylinder, I would maybe call it, um, let's say if there was a if there was a volume, you know, around there, I might say it's 90, uh, one, two, 92.5. You know what I'm saying? I only get to have one decimal place as my estimate. Okay. If we look at the one on the right, what is it measured to? Is it also measured to the whole number? Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's also measured to the whole number. So again, I would get one decimal place here if I was measuring that. Let's go ahead and try, what, what, does, that, um, what does that measurement look like it is right here? Do we know where we would measure on this line? You see how it has a curve? Where do we measure it from? The top of the curve or the bottom of the curve? Okay, do we measure it from here or from here? Yeah, we measure from the bottom. So this curved line right here, is, it has a name. It's called the meniscus. Okay, you might want to write that down. Meniscus. Okay, I'm, I think that's how it's spelled, but, you know, I could be wrong. Okay, the meniscus. Um, the meniscus is what happens to water when it's in particularly a glass container, water has a lot of surface tension and so it starts to stick to the glass and starts to stick to itself and it kind of pulls itself up the walls of the container. And so you'll see that on the outside of that graduated cylinder, water kind of makes this little cup, right? That's what the meniscus is, is this curved line. And we always read from the bottom of the meniscus, okay? Not the top part, the bottom, okay? So if I was going to look at this particular measurement, where do we think we might measure this or what might we call this? This would be like 41, 42, 43, right? Do you see where it's measured to the whole number there? And here's where our line is. If we had to make a guess, what do we think? Is it greater than 42 milliliters? Here's 42 right here. Greater than 42? Is it greater than 43? Do we think it's between 42 and 43? Or you think it's exactly 43? It's pretty hard to tell, right? It's pretty hard to tell. So you, you get some wiggle room when we take measurements, right? All you can do is read it to you the best of your ability. I personally think it dips a little below 43, you can kind of see where that meniscus crosses over that tick mark. So if it were me, I would probably call this measurement 42.9, right? You could have put 43.0 and that would have been a value that I accepted, right? That would have been okay. But I would probably call that 42.9. You could have even said 42.8, right? Depending on how you see it. That's the thing about measurements is that it's all about how you read it. Do you think 42.0 would have been an acceptable answer? No, because that would have been all the way down here, right? And we definitely weren't in that range. Or 44.0, do you think that would have been acceptable? No. So we've really got to be careful about how we read that. Um, but I think 42.9 would have been an acceptable range there, okay? Let's try some here. On the next slide, I've got some colored 
in for you. I think they're a little maybe difficult to see on your paper. We'll do them together as well if you're having trouble seeing it on your paper here. Can you see the shading on your note slides or is it kind of hard? Okay, it's a little difficult. If you want to draw kind of where that line is on your sheet, you can. But let's look at the first one. First of all, we have to decide what is it measured to? Is it measured to the tens place or to the whole number? To the whole number, right? Because between 20 and 30, there are 10 tick marks, right? So that means it's got to be to the whole number. So I can automatically start by saying, well, I know it's 20, point, 20 something. Then I count up here, 21, 22, 23, and then I look at 24. What do we think about that one? Do we think it's greater than, less than, or equal to 24? I think it seems pretty equal to 24. Okay, if I were reading that, I would probably call that equal to 24, which means can I just leave my measurement like that? What do I need to have? I need to have a point zero on there. Can I do point zero zero? No, because this digit was estimated, right? I took a guess on that point zero, which means I don't get to add another one, right? Because my instrument was measured to the whole number, I only get to guess on one digit, 24.0 milliliters. That's what I would call that. Okay, let's look at the next one here. Now this one, do we think it's measured to the whole number or is it measured to the tenths place? It's measured to the tenths place. How do we know? Right, here's two and here's three. And there's 10 tick marks between that, which means this would be 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, right? Do we see how that works? And do you see the difference between the first one and the second one? Okay, good. Because we have graduated cylinders back here that work both ways. We even have some that are measured like by 0 0.2, then 0 0.4, then 0 0.6, right? So you really have to count the tick marks between those numbers and figure out what is the scale on my graduated cylinder. Because it might not even be as simple as whole numbers and tens place, right? It might be 0.2s, it might be 0.5s or whatever it could be, okay? So make sure you pay attention there. Um, let's take a guess on this one. I know it's greater than 2.6, but less than 2.7. Okay, so I'm automatically going to put 2.6. And then what else do I need to do? I need to add an extra one. So I make an estimate about where I think it lands between 2.6 and 2.7. So what would you call that? 2.6 what? Okay, we've got lots of different answers here, right? If I'm looking just at the relationship at where it lands between 2.6 six and 2.7. If this were me, I probably would have called this 2.66, right? Anywhere really in that range is probably acceptable. 2.4 to 2.8 maybe is probably the range we're looking for there. Um, but this is our estimated digit. Okay. Does that make sense? Why don't you try the last one on your own and we'll see if we can agree on what we think it is. So this last one here that you were doing on your own, I think it's measured to the tenths place. If I were going to make that measurement, I would probably call it 6.60 milliliters, right? Because to me, it looks like that meniscus and the bottom of the meniscus particularly is right on that 0.6 line. Remember, we're not measuring the upper parts, the upper sides of that meniscus. We're only measuring the lowest point. Okay, I will tell you when you go to measure these things in the lab, the meniscus is much less defined, right? In images like this, it's really clearly defined. Sometimes in the lab, we just see like the water goes straight across. That's okay. That's how you measure it, right? Do you think it's important for measurements like these for us to be standing up high and reading it or at eye level and reading it? We need to be at eye level, which means if my graduated cylinder is sitting on the table, I might have to squat down so that I can see it. Do you think lifting it up to my eye level is probably a good idea? 
probably not, right? Because it could be turned, it could be uneven. So when I'm taking measurements, I have to be at eye level so that I can really see where that meniscus is at and where that um, where that measurement truly needs to be. Okay, do we feel okay about measuring with graduated cylinders? Okay, these are really the only devices in our lab that give us real um, clear indications of volume. We've got lots of other glassware back there that have markings on them about 50 milliliters and 100 milliliters, but they're not very exact. Graduated cylinders give us really exact values, okay? One right here is called a triple beam balance. Why do you think it's called triple beam? Yeah, there's three, right? There's three beams, and each of them measure something different. Um, they all measure mass. We're all measuring this in grams, but they, um, they give us different values of mass. So one of them is the hundreds place, one of them is the tens, and one of them is the ones place, okay? So that's called a triple beam balance. Electronic balance is just a simple little scale, right? Sometimes it's measured to the tenths, sometimes it's measured to the hundredths. Do you think on electronic balances, we would need to estimate another digit? Nope, nope. So for electronic, you might have to maybe write that part down. For electronic measurement devices, we don't estimate. We don't add an estimated digit. Because in this case, with electronic balances or electronic scales, we don't know, right? We don't know. We only see what the screen tells us. So we don't know, is it farther that way? Is it less? We don't, we don't know that. So we don't add or estimate any more digits on top of an electronic balance. If we look at measuring here with a triple beam balance, we've got to make sure that we're adding those three together. So for sure, we've got 100 plus what else? 90 plus what else? Is it 191 grams yet? No, we know it's 190 point something because it's not 191 yet, right? Our measurement falls between 190 and 191. So it looks like here is our measurement right about there. Okay, this would be 190.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5. What do we think about this one? Right? It seems to be really close to right on the four, right? Or just under or just over. It's kind of hard for us to tell with this image. But that means if I think it's exactly on the four, I would call it 190.4 what? I have to add the zero. Okay, and then what would my units be? See, what's it tell us we're measuring in? grams. 190.40 grams. So with triple beam balances, these tick marks in between go to the tenths place, which means we estimate that digit right there, right? We've got to estimate it to the hundredths place. Okay, go ahead and try the last one on your own and we'll see if we agree. Tell me, um, Brody, what'd you have? 37 point what? 37.30. Uh, Grace, tell me what you had. 37.3. Okay. Um, Owen, tell me what you have. 37.30. Grace, Cotta, what'd you have? Okay, so we see a couple of those. Olivia, what'd you have? Okay, another one. Do we think this one falls exactly on that point three? Right, it's hard to tell in this image, but if it does, we need to make sure we have the zero, right? The three is what it's read to, so we do wanna make sure we have a zero there. So two decimal places on these mass measurements.